Good morning. We are going to get started with our media availabilities in advance of Sunday's Can-Am 500 here at Phoenix Raceway. Our first guest here in the media center is Jimmy Johnson, driver of the number 48 Lowe's Chevrolet. Uh, Jimmy, you sit eighth on the playoffs leaderboard as you look forward to, the, to Miami. Uh, just talk about your approach coming into Phoenix here. Yeah, it's a pretty easy approach for us. You know, we're in a must-win situation. Um, you know, we wish that uh, we were in a better points scenario, but that's just not the case. Um, this team, you know, thrives on pressure and adversity, and we're certainly in that position right now. And um, when we look at the last two or three uh, races here, we've had very competitive cars. And, uh, you know, the efforts made this week to make sure we brought the best bullet, um, second to none. Uh, really proud of my team and the, uh, the way that all of Hendrick Motorsports is working together to, to make sure that the 24 car and the 48 car have their best chances to, uh, to, to win here and, and move on and stay alive in the, the championship. So uh, we'll, we'll find out Sunday afternoon and, you know, just excited to get out there and get to work. All right. We'll open up to questions. We'll start here with Claire and then we'll go to Wolfgang and Mike. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Everybody's debating, what is it? You know, certainly not your driving, uh, your seven-time champ. What is it that you are close to putting your finger on a balance of the cars? You know, what has been the challenge for you guys kind of debating all over the airwaves? Why don't you tell us if, what you do know and what you don't know? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a part of this team, so everybody has skin in the game and the performance of the car. Um, at the end of the day, you know, chasing speed is, is really the culprit. And I feel that next year we'll be in a much better position with the Camaro uh, body on the race car. Um, so you start making decisions, you know, late spring, early summer, just trying to extract speed out of the cars. And that doesn't always make them comfortable to drive. Um, so it's hard to say it's just one thing, but the start of the process is just trying to make our cars faster. And, um, you know, at times we've not made the best decisions and made them very hard to drive. And I think... Uh, you know, Texas was an example of that. Also, Kansas was uh, you know, spun twice there. Um, so it's just, just trying to make the cars faster. We'll come up here to Wolfgang, Mike, and then Bob. Uh, Jimmy, over here. Um, how hard or stressful is for you the situation, this must-win situation handled this weekend? This is a very hard pressure for you, stress this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the round of eight in my mind, the way I've approached it, it's been a must-win period. You know, I look at the uh, the track in Martinsville, I look at Texas, and then uh, I didn't want to be in a position here to need points um, because if you're here needing points, you got to win. So I, I feel like this round of eight has been a must-win for us all along. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to step up and, and win at Martinsville or at Texas. Uh, so now it continues. You know, we're here and we, we must win. We'll stay up here with Mike. Mike Embry, USA Today. It, you mentioned thriving under pressure. How does that show itself? Do you drive harder? Does the team work more on the car, more faster pit stops? What? How does that show itself? Yeah, it's all the above. Uh, and then, honestly, it's really identifying with 100%. Um, that, that's, that's the key from a pit stop. If they go for 105%, you're going to have a mistake. If the driver's trying harder than he should, gonna make a mistake. So I, I feel pressure can make teams either play play tight or some can play free in those moments. And I think our team has shown um, over over time that we can play and race and compete free. Um, we're not immune to it. You know, we, we have our moments as well, but uh, we're gonna have to fall back on everything this team is made of to win here this weekend and keep our championship hopes alive. We'll go down the middle here, Bob, Jonathan, and Jeff. Bob Pockers, ESPN, obviously Dale Jr.'s last cup race uh, next week. I'm curious, beyond what he's been doing on the bicycle, what differences have you seen and what difference do you see in him, mainly as a person, between the time he came to Hendrick and now? Yeah, there's, there's many. I mean, I feel that um, you know, Hendrick Motorsports, he's put his guard down in some ways and has been... Um, you know, let us all look into his life much more and be a part of it. You know, I think uh, social media has added a, a layer of that. Um, I think his relationship with Amy, you know, their, their marriage, and now they're expecting their first child. Um, I think all of that, we've been able to learn and understand Dale far more, and he's been comfortable um, later in his career to, uh, to let that personal side kind of, tr you know, come through and shine through, um, through traditional media, social media, and all those things. So, um, I'm proud to call him a friend and very excited for, you know, what the future holds for him. Jonathan Mayman, NASCAR.com. Jimmy, 
I think a lot of people thought the round of eight would be your strongest round in the playoffs the past two weekends. Obviously, things haven't gone that well, and you've historically run well at Martinsville and at Texas. This weekend, do you throw the notebook out the window and go for something else, or do you guys stick to, to tried and true, you know, Jimmy, Chad, Phoenix? You know, everything's been, been tried at this point. Um, yeah, I think we have to make decisions once we get on track this morning and see where that setup leads us. And, you know, if we're, we're ahead on speed, then we stay tight, you know, stay, stay tight to that setup. Um, if we're not where we need to be, we, we throw it all at it. We, we can't leave any questions on the table going into Saturday night. Uh, we need to try all variations of setups and uh, we'll try anything and everything we can today and tomorrow to get that car right. Go to Jeff. Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. Jimmy, you said everything's been tried at this point. You've obviously been chasing speed all year. Where does this year overall rank in terms of the most frustrating that you've had in your career? Um, it, it's definitely high on the list. I, I don't know if this year versus maybe like 15 um, kind of play together. 15 was a tough one on us as well with that rules package and trying to get speed out of our cars. So I'd say between 15 and, and uh, 17, those have probably been the two most challenging years of my career in the cup level, at the cup level. Do Should I any... ramble more? <laughs> Sorry. Do we have any final questions for Jimmy? We'll go back to Bob and then come to Lee. What do you think Chase Elliott's chances are this weekend? He's run w well here before, and is there anything that he's actually doing here that you can lean on? Yeah, I mean, I think the 24 car has always had a good setup here. You know, think of Jeff's history here, um, Chase. Um, you know, so Alan and Chase both have a good feel for this track, and inherently, Alan and, and Chad have a, some different concepts with their cars and where their cars go. So I can't say our cars are identical, but um, I feel chance, Chase's chances are high. This has been a you know great track for him and that car historically. Hey, SpencerMotorsport.com. Good morning. Hi. Are you, are you still confident Chad Knauss is the guy that can lead you into battle and lead you to that eight championship? And are you still standing firm that he's the guy you want to retire with? Yeah, I've started this with Chad and I, I want to finish it with him. Um, you know, outside of uh, something crazy happening and, and him, you know, crew chiefs live in dog years versus drivers. So, and I think he's made that known that his time might expire before mine does just because of the wear and tear of being a crew chief. Um, you know, I love our entire team and all that it's made of and, and every individual on that team, all the engineers, mechanics, um, you know, we just haven't been making the right decisions and going in the right direction. It's not an individual's, um, uh, problem. You know, we're, we're all a part of this team and we're all a part of the decision-making process. So, um, hopefully we make the right decisions today and the next weekend. And then over the off season, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of change coming for the, the Chevrolets. The Camaro is going to be a huge help. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll take a deep breath once the offseason hits and then look forward to getting started next year. Chad? I thought he was. Was he signed? I don't know where that's at. It tells you how much I think about that. I'm concerned about that aspect of it. <laughs> yep. Any final questions for Jimmy? All right, Jimmy. Thanks for joining us. Cool. Good luck on Thank Sunday. You.